Hey yo, um, how doth thee fare? Today I'm going to share with you guys my first relatively successful um, stage 30 full auto Odin event dungeon team. Now, I'm going to break this down as best as I can for you guys, and I'll talk about it sort of as we're going through it. I have a recording here that I'll play. Um, so this is the team here. And we'll go ahead and talk about this real quick. It's playing on two times speed, just so I could talk about it and we're not sitting here for the entire time. I'll start from left to right. Um, so Walking Tomb Dragon is gonna be here because of basically HP burn. Somebody in my YouTube comments was talking about uh, something I could potentially use. And they suggested to use an HP burner. And I thought, okay, well, who's the best HP burner I have? And it's probably, somewhere along the lines of Walking Tomb Dragon. Why do I think he's probably the best one in my squad? It's also because of the other assets that he brings. He brings um, basically a full HP heal, right? He's got a full heal on his A3, basically full heal because it heals based off of whoever has the highest HP, which is usually Walking Tomb Dragon. And because of his A2 being irresistible, his burns are gonna land and i don't have to worry about the high accuracy requirements and that's you know, pretty nice every time hp burns tick even if it's on the um on the the small ads here that you see like valkyrie and Tervold, he's still going to be receiving hp burns everybody is going to be receiving hp burns on this team here no matter what Sun Wukong is here for mainly for placing block buffs and for buff stealing it's not 100 percent for some reason even even though he's got good enough accuracy, I'll show you guys the builds in a minute. Sometimes Odin doesn't get his, what do you call it? His uh, block block damage buff removed. And it's kind of weird, but as you can see, the block buffs are going up. So every nine turns, Odin is placing his uh, block damage buff and this is stopping it from happening. The other thing is because Sun Wukong is here. Oh, uh, let me go here. Yeah, uh, I'll start from the beginning. Because Sun Wukong is here, people like Tur or champions like Turvold or anybody else often will focus damage or focus fire on SWK. Now, because SWK is immortal and he just keeps coming back unless you place a block revive on him, every three turns he comes back, he's always going to be the target because he's built relatively weak. And champions like Turvold will automatically target anybody who seems killable. If their AI deems a certain champion to be killable they're going to aim down on that champion unless right like right now sun wukong has a block damage buff on then Turvold would would have gone for somebody else like um makage who's the next quote unquote killable champion all right talking about makage she has great control of your enemies so she has um, the stun on her A2 that you just saw right now, she's got a sleep on her A1, not too useful, but you know, there are instances where it does um, play some uh, roles. And she also has the ability to buff strip with her A3, and that's obviously pretty useful going up against these guys. Now, Alatreon Blademaster is actually pretty poggers, a hard carry for this team, to be honest. And I actually got this idea of using Alatreon Blademaster. I honestly forgot I had him, but I'm using Alatreon as a result of somebody in my clan talking about how um, he's got his protected buffs, basically. So Alatreon has a buff cleanse, a debuff cleanse on his A3, as well as a protected block debuff. This is great because all of her buffs stay with us. Odin doesn't steal any buffs or remove any buffs. It stays on and Odin is unable to place the stuns on us, which is really annoying. Let's keep playing it. Because every time the, like Odin is going pretty fast, right? Now, the way around this is basically just to go a little bit faster before Odin goes. And someone even talked about using Arbiter. I'll show you guys different teams later. Uh, probably in a different video, but for this one, I wanted to get this one out. But yeah, that stun that you see right now, whenever we have Alatreon have the protected buffs on, that basically deals with that. And uh, he also increases buff duration on his A1. He's got a chance for that. He also helps with the survivability because he's got a big shield on his A2. And yeah, just an overall great champion. I have him in a relentless set. We'll break down the builds in a bit. Now, Rhodos is here for damage and to place block revives because every time Odin kills Sun Wukong or kills anybody, he's going to bring back the adds. 
I have found that in this dungeon, what you want to do is basically focus down on the ads as best as possible, take them down. I usually focus on, uh, let me pause right here. Let me, where's the mouse here? What I like to do, if I'm manualing, which I, I don't want to do, but if I am, oh, there's a lot going on in the screen now. What I like to do, if I'm manualing a run, is I like to focus on whoever is here first. So here we have Ursiga, who does a lot of damage mitigation as well as decreased attack and crit damage, which is, which is not good for us. So I like to get rid of her. In the previous stages, we have Rafmatab, who kind of hits hard and then also places a reflex damage, which we don't want to deal with. So I usually target whoever's here first, and then I start targeting the other champions. But Rotus is going to be here to block those revives so Odin can't bring anybody back. And once all the adds are down, then you're basically just dealing with Odin. And if it's just if it's just him by himself, he's not that much of a threat. So yeah, um, I've recently changed this team around because I found faster teams. The point of me trying to do this specific team was to do a challenge where I didn't use Nut or I didn't use Armand's or any duplicates or um, Seer. Like I know you guys were talking about in my comments saying, hey, use these champions. It'll be a lot faster. It's like, yeah, I want to do that, but I wanted to first try doing it without using any cheese strats a little bit, uh, if you know what I mean. But now that this is pretty much done and I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish, I've since then moved on to a different comp that I'll share with you guys in another video. But let's go ahead and skip forward and we're going to break down the team for you here. This is pretty consistent, but I have seen it fail once. And the conditions where it failed was, for some reason, Alatran Blademaster died first. Don't know how or don't know why, but he was the one who was targeted and RNG happened. He died first, then they took out Rodos, and then it was just Drang, Sun Wukong, and Makage, but they took out Makage, and then it was just Drang and Wukong, and obviously they're not going to be able to do it themselves. All right, so Makage, you're going to want to make sure you're starting off the round against Odin with her second form. That's pretty much all you care about. Want to make sure that you're stunning your enemies and pushing back turn meter. This is also helpful to remove buffs. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like I said, for some reason against Odin, the block damage buff doesn't always get removed. It's, it's weird. She also brings the 80 points of extra accuracy when you put her in the lead, so I run her in the lead because the accuracy and speed requirements are quite high. I have six star blessing on her, so you know she gets um, extra defense, uh, cruelty stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, no blessings on her yet. I definitely will later on. She's in nine pieces of protection. If you guys want to see specific pieces of gear, here they are, focusing on speed and accuracy. I have her in nine pieces of protection because I use her in Hydra. And I want to boost damage because nine pieces of protection will give boost to damage per buff. And I usually leave her in the first form when I'm going up against Hydra. But yeah, we're basically focusing on speed, accuracy, and survivability. So you don't have to have her in nine piece protection, just reiterating. You can also run her in something else just as long as you're getting these high speed and high accuracy. Well, um, this is honestly not that high, but I account for the 80 points of accuracy and I also account for the fact that she ignores 20% resistance so uh, just keep that in mind I actually don't know why her, ac her why her attack is so high but that's just the way the cookie crumbles when you have limited pieces of protection gear now moving on to Alatreon blade master we have him in a relentless set pretty useful focusing on speed HP and survivability stats right his damage or his he's just an hp based champion we have a nice fat four um quad roll a quad roll with speed on speed and immunity in fact i'm gonna go ahead and bump this up even further please give me a fiver we'll take a four and let me see over here we got hp on the ring hp with hp on the amulet and then defense with hp so survivability stats and speed basically you want him to go as fast as possible and survive with relentless you want him to take um you want him to take as many turns as possible at least in, in my opinion by the way guys if you go if you don't know i don't know everything i just tell you guys what works for me 
or what I've learned from other people. So, you know, don't take my word as an end-all be-all. I, I don't know a lot of things. I make a lot of mistakes. I learn from you guys. The only difference between me and you guys is I'm behind the YouTube screen right now. So, yeah. Um, these are the stats that you're looking for. I guess priority stats would be speed and then HP and then defense. Like I said, speed and survivability stats. The main things here are going to be his A3, the block debuffs, and the debuff cleanse. He has a full debuff cleanse and then places a block buff. It's all protected. The shield and increased defense also help with survivability, and they're also protected. Shield is equivalent to max HP, which is why you want to have high HP. And then also has a 40, 50, let's see, 55% chance of increasing the duration of two random buffs on each individual ally by one turn. That's obviously helpful. Uh, for a while, I was actually running him in the lead because of his 30% boost to speed in the dungeons and Odin actually counts. The event dungeon counts as well, I mean, as a dungeon. So I was running him in the lead, but I found that even, even with a relatively decent accuracy, it still wasn't enough to uh, place all the buffs or remove everything that I needed to. Uh, sometimes I would get resisted and that's not something you want to happen. Because I have a six star blessing on him, I'm running Brimstone. Brimstone actually does help because Smite drops down from the sky and well, smites. These are the blessings, or these are the masteries. As always, do not blindly copy masteries, but go ahead and feel free to blindly copy these masteries. If I were you, if I was, if I was going to redo this, I guess I could redo it, huh? I basically would just change everything around to take improved parry instead of uh, decrease AOE attacks. And the reason being is because crit hits are the ones that are going to do the most damage to you. Not everybody is hitting with AOE attacks. So actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's, re let's, let's redo this. We're getting extra res. We're taking improved parry. We're going to take increased shield and healing received. We're going to have a chance to remove a random debuff. Could take shadow heal as well. Going to take damage mitigation. We're going to take um, a chance to counterattack. And we could take cycle of revenge also, which is a pretty... Pretty nice, neat skill to have because anytime an ally is hit, he has a 50% chance of increasing turn meter. Again, you want it to go as fast as possible. You could also take um, some extra um, damage mitigation for your team by taking Bulwark. We're taking extra max HP like we were before. Uh, he doesn't heal, does he? I don't think he heals. Yeah, there's no healing, so we're going to skip um, this move right here. We're going to increase the value of the shield buffs that he casts by 5%. We could also, let's see, value of shields place, if 40 or less, that's going to be pretty huge. Increase accuracy, we don't really need it. When a buff expires or is removed, he is going to have a 30% chance of increasing turn meter. We definitely want that. Let's see, um, increase the amount of healing and the value of shield buffs if the target has any of these, um, what do you call it, debuffs. That's pretty nice too, but I'm thinking maybe even cycle of magic just because that seems to come in handy. Could also take this. I don't really see Leech or this move having any play, so maybe we take Cycle of Magic and then take uh, Lore of Steel to boost some stats as well from artifact sets. And then we could take Lasting Gifts as well. It's not going to increase these buffs, but everything else is going to get that so or give it, so we're going to take that as well. We're going to take Healing Savior, have a chance to increase the shields. Let's just try it. We'll just try Bulwark. Sun Wukong, this is the wrong Sun Wukong. This is the right Sun Wukong. He is all in perception. He is my support Wukong. We're having uh, 800, and when we go into battle, it's closer to like 890 accuracy. 229 speed, and that's pretty much what we care about. You want to try to make him go as fast as possible with a lot of accuracy. And with Sun Wukong, uh, I guess I'll show you the pieces of gear real quick. Speed and accuracy, main main things here. Accuracy. I could reroll this to boot or to speed. Reroll the speed on the boots. I got accuracy on accuracy. The main thing here is Sun Wukong does the buff strip, the steel, and block buffs, and that's basically what you want to deal with the um, block damage or any buffs that go up. And then he has a sheep on the A2, which also helps to control the fight or control our our enemies but at the same time it could be a double-edged sword prolonging the fight because when you sheep you don't really kill an enemy you just sheep them and then they, they always come back with half hp and that kind of sucks he's also got a stun on his a1 
Here are the masteries going down the accuracy route and counter attack. All right, Rotos, this is my everyday use Rotos. He's, um, you know, built out in Savage and that's, you know, my arena basically champion. And this is how he's built. Just straight damage. That's all I care about with him, just damage. Here are the total stats, speed, attack, crit damage. His A2 charges up his HP up to 60,000. And after a while, he kills people and places a block revive so Odin can't revive anybody. We put Ward of the Fallen on him for some extra tankiness. And it also gives these bonuses here. Still waiting on a six star, because that would be pretty nice. Mastery's on him, taking Helm Smasher. And then for Walking Tomb Drang, we have him in a solo set. So regen and immortal, 18% heals every single turn, plus a little bit of extra HP. Here are the specific pieces of gear. Looking for speed, survivability stats. Let's go ahead and ascend this. It can only hope. See what we get. We get defense. We'll take defense. I like defense. And whenever you're building a champion that does healing, you want to make sure they're going at a decent speed so that they can take their turns. Because if they don't take turns, then they're, then they're not going to be able to do any heals. So make sure you're building with a decent amount of speed. And you don't need accuracy on him because his A2 is irresistible. Cannot be resisted as long as it's booked up. And then equalizes HP, then attacks one enemy. Uh, this death, death balance move is going to save a lot of your your teammates from dying it all helps and then we have emergency heal on him also so that every time a shield on him is broken or removed or expires or anything he's going to be taking extra heals here are the masteries on him regular solo masteries taking extra resistance because that's what you want i think uh did i show you specific pieces of gear i think i did um and then of course because we have emergency heal on him we're, we're going to want to make sure we have a artifact that gives the wearer shield every time he attacks and like i said every hp burn that ticks off is going to help Rain drop, drop top, drop top. smoking no cooking the hot box cooking on your